God has put a power in us, the power of prayer in our mouths. He wants us to use it. And that's the only way we can attack the enemy. Today's passage is read to us, talks about Anna. And it also talks about Elizabeth. If you remember the story of Anna, Anna was the wife of Elikana along with Penina. Penina had children, Anna did not have any children. Not only did she not have any children, but Penina was making fun of her. And she was feeling very bad. She was feeling really, really, really sad. But she never gave up. She always went to Shiloh and prayed every year. Now, as you may recall, Shiloh must not be in her backyard because otherwise she wouldn't have to go that far to get to Shiloh. And it wouldn't be once a year. So for anyone, if anyone asks you why you come all the way to VOG to ask God to do good for you, tell them you are going to your Shiloh. You are going to your VOG Shiloh. Where God is and where God answers prayers. They may call you a fool, but tell them, okay, I'd rather be a fool for God than be a wise person for man. Because God is a perfect God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is your problem? What is your situation? What is your condition that you don't believe that God can control? That God can resolve? That all you need to do is ask him. As I said earlier, I said there is nothing new in terms of a problem or condition or situation under the sun. And don't even think about the condition of your birth. Because even that... It's because God wants to glorify himself in your life. Amen. Amen. You see, the love of man, no matter how deep and caring, no matter how good, doesn't get you too far, unfortunately. We we'll like to think that we, with our spouses, that we can say, hey, listen, I care for you now, but you know I love you now. But as good as that may be, it is limited. You see, Anna had a problem. She wanted a child. And her husband loved her even very, very much. And her husband even said to her, he said, listen. He said, why do you feel so sad? Why do you feel so bad? He said, is my love for you not worth more than 10 sons? Anna said, no. I want a child. I know you love me and you care for me. The husband knew that she had a problem and he loved her more. Even more than Penina who gave her all these children. But Anna had a need and she prayed to God for that need. You see, it is, uh, when I read through the Bible, the way the Bible mentions certain things, you have to wonder. When Anna now, when, if you go to 1 Samuel 1, when Anna now prayed to God and... Eli, the priest, said to her, he said, he said, what do you, actually, he adorned her mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Eli said unto her, Yes. How long will thou be Stay drunk, drunk in, exactly. Put away thy wine from, thy, from thee. Yes. And Anna answered and said, No, my Lord. Yes. I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit. And I've asked the Lord. I've drunk in neither wine nor yes. strong drink. But I put my heart onto the Lord. The you Lord. see, she was so her heart, so her spirit was sorrowful. Her heart was in need. Her heart was in want. And they, just before that, we're told that with her husband they had eaten and drank. And so maybe Eli thought she was now full of wine. He said, "For how long would you stay drunk? You keep doing this. We are, we are, you are, keep talking like this, huh?" Uh, so now this is a we are, we are, we are. But he, she was just talking, but she was talking to her God. God is understanding of the heart. Yes. Now, the, the worship in Celestial Church is, is, is absolutely unique. In the sense that when, you, when we have the three members prayer, people pray out aloud. When we have the silent prayer, we have people praying inside. It's complete. It's full. There is nothing missing in it. The only way you can miss something, if you, don't, if you worship in this church, if you don't practice everything that there is to be practiced. I mentioned to somebody, I said, for a while, where there was discord in another parish that we were, 
intermittently we would go to a particular church, but it was not, there was nothing there. This, it, to me, it was really lacking the spirit, it was lacking the, the fulfillment of what Celestial Church gives you. It has everything, every ingredient that you can ask. Read through the Bible from A to Z, you will see that everything that, that, that Abraham did, Everything that Solomon did, everything that David did, everything that Anna did, everything that all the priests, the prophets, and the great people in the Bible did, we do it here. It is an example. We do it the way it is done so that it can be for us the way it's supposed to be. So Anna prayed and prayed and prayed unto the Lord. Even though the priest thought she was drunk, she said, no, she poured her heart unto the Lord. But the priest said to her, it will be for you, maybe for you, as you have asked. And she departed. Now, one remarkable thing I, I want to point to you that when they got home, the Bible says, well, the husband knew her and then she began the son. But I was laughing to myself. I said, God, for all this loving that the husband did for her, there was a lot of uh, knowing that happened in between, but nothing happened. It tells you that when God has not purposed, I don't care how much work you put into it, zero will be the result. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. But when God says yes, no matter how little it is that you've done, uh -uh. and then the Bible also tells us that God shot her womb. You see what I'm saying? It isn't that the devil shot her womb. The devil is not capable of doing it. If you don't lend yourself to the devil, the devil has no power over you because God has given you the weapons to be able to say to the devil, depart. Get away from me because I am the child of God. Hallelujah. 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 I also said to you, do not regard the condition of your birth because God is only trying to use that to prove that he is God. When the Bible says that rich men cannot get through to heaven, it will be difficult for them to get to heaven as it is difficult for the eye, for, for, for the head of a cow to get through the eye of a needle, of a camel, or, 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 or a camel. camel. Exactly. You get the point. But the, 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 the situation is this, that if there are no situations and conditions like that, how then will you know that there is God? You find it, I'm sure you find it hilarious when people say, Especially people who have all the, all the things they need. They say, who is God? Where is God? I mean, yes, I guess it may sound logical because, hey, you don't see God. So how can you believe God? Meanwhile, you never believed in God. You have all the money you need. You have all the wealth you need. You have all the houses you need. Things are working for you. People are serving you. But yeah, the Bible tells us that God says that he will bring the lowly person from nothing to be, to dine with princes, to live with kings. If God already made you a king, why would, you, why would it be a privilege for you to dine with a king? If God already made you a prince, why is it necessary, why is it important for you to dine with princes? It's not important, right? <coughs> Hallelujah. 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 The two stories I must tell you, as I said, even not only did God shut the womb of Anna, also Elizabeth was considered barren. If you look at Luke 1, 36, you will see that she was considered completely barren. That's what she was called. But not only did God make her bear a child, but God made her bear a really, really, really important child. And now she was saying to God, now, not only will I be in the history books, nobody will ever forget me. Until this day, when you talk about Jesus, don't you talk about John? And is Elizabeth's name forgiven? Forgotten? Not at all. So, so is your portion. Put all your situations before God. Put all your conditions before God. Don't never give up. Do like Anna. Ask in Shiloh. Ask continuously. Don't let the conditions that the enemy is trying to put on you. You see, when the enemy wants to perfect their will in you, they will put you in a state. They will put you in a, in a state where, where you are in a stupor. 
you won't even know whether to move, to run, or to just stay. You won't remember the power of prayer. You won't remember that the prayer has been put in your mouth. You won't remember that God has given you the spirit that is supposed to comfort you, that you're supposed to banish those problems away with your mouth. So that those problems will go away and whatever it is that you need and ask, like Anna asked specifically, he says, God, he didn't say, God, just give me a child. He said, God, give me a man child. And then he also, she also vowed to the Lord and said what she will do with that child. So when you are asking, Celestia, when a prophet tells you, here's a candle, say this prayer, say to God what you will do for God when he does this in your life. It is no joke. It comes directly from the scriptures. You say it and you do it and your heart meets with God. There is no way that your prayer will not be answered. There is no condition that the Lord cannot change for you. He is God. Hallelujah. 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 I want to remind us that problems are part of our existence. Situations are part of our existence. That is how the might and the presence of God is shown in our lives. Don't even be deceived by anybody that says, well, oh, what, why? Why is it? Why me? Why me? Why not you? Why not you? I was listening to a sermon by Martin Luther King. He says, listen, he says, we've got situations now. We've got problems now. He says, but in order for you to see the stars, it must be the darkest. When you look up right now, do you see any stars? You're not going to. But when it's as dark as possible, and in fact, the more dark it is, the more of the stars you see. So the more of a problem you have, the more of a situation you think you have, the more of a solution right, lies in the horizon because God is there to answer you. But you must ask. And you must pray. And you must believe that he alone will do it. And he does do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I remember my own condition, and I speak of my own, uh, my mom is sitting here, you can ask her, where, which hospital was I born in? I don't think I was born in a hospital. And if on my birth certificate, we say I was born in Ondo, but I think I was born in a village, even farther, farther out of town. True fact. <laughs> but you'll never know it by the way I speak English, would you? No. <laughs> so it is true that I was born in, in, in a condition that, that um, even I, I attended a village school. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Brother Ike is familiar with some of those villages. <laughs> Only a motorcycle can get there. <laughs> Because the car can't get there, the car gets there, it sinks on the way. Hallelujah, fact. But I did go to a village school, but um, by God's divine plan, I was able to uh, go to uh, a secondary school in, in a place where I didn't speak the language, so all I had to do was speak English. And people there thought I was from Ghana, they thought I was from everywhere but Nigeria. Um, but God is mighty. Uh, and God uses situations and conditions to change things in the people's lives. The story I just told you is really, really abbreviated, but I'm, I'm going to tell you, in the fifth year, uh, I believe, yeah, in the fifth year of my high school, this is a place where my parents had never been, another village, I didn't speak the language. There was trouble. It, was, it wasn't caused by me, but my name was mentioned, such as my star. People, other people cause trouble, they call my name. So... The, the police were involved, and uh, eventually some people prevailed on the police. Now, the people that caused the trouble, remember, the, the trouble was started by a lawyer who was prominent in that town. But the person that actually caused trouble lived in the house of a judge who, was, who had more power, more influence than he. So they wouldn't go after the, the people. They were going after us little people. So eventually they took this case out of uh, the police, and they said we should settle it at the, at the king's palace. So I was there, I had people that were really supporting me, I can't forget them. 
uh, till this day. They just thought they, they were behind me, no matter what, they were just supporting me. Um, so, before I speak, they would even speak in my defense. So at the King's Palace, I said, oh, well, I don't speak the language. Which, for five years, I'd been going to school in this place. This is Auntie Augusta's language, by the way. <laughs> so I, I said I didn't speak the language. And truly, I think at that, to that point, I really had not spoken the language, but I absorbed everything. So something was now said, one, one guy was now relating his own story and now said that I caused whatever. And before you know from nowhere, I spoke Isha. <laughs> I spoke, I said, oh, okay, well, well, oh, you may. When first I said that, oh my God, there was big laughter. There was big applause. This problem, there was a problem. All of a sudden, it was laughter. Trouble was over. No more trouble. You see what I'm saying? That God has a way of using situations to solve situations. I had no plan. I had no, I didn't know what was that, what was going to lead to that. But I never, by the way, I never told my parents or anybody else this story. But it's a fact. Um, it's like, <laughs> God is in control. God is in control. Hallelujah. So I said to you, brethren, what is your situation? What is your condition that that is, is making you to be afraid, that is making you wonder if God is really in his throne. Only a fool will continue to say God is not alive and that God, God does not answer prayers. But I tell you, whatever your condition is, whatever your situation is, don't be afraid to come to Shiloh because it's the only place that the answer lies. Yes. When they call you a fool, Say, yes, I want to be a fool. Don't be like that person in Luke that Jesus Christ called a fool, that rich man. He was busy stacking up wealth, things that didn't matter, preparing him for next year. And Jesus said, said look, you are nothing but you are a fool. Because today, I will come for, your, for your, your soul. But that is not you. Today, this day, you are worshiping and you are praying to your God. You have the opportunity to do that. You did like Anna. You asked God. And then you came back. Not only did you ask him, you paid your vow and said, God, because I have said so, so I will do. And you did according to what you told God you would do. Because God will be faithful even when we are not faithful. So my simple prayer today is that whatever your situation, whatever your condition, whatever that plague that the Lord God will smooth it over. Amen. And he will say to you, my son, my daughter, I am God. Oh, yes. I've got this. Yes. God is in the business of impossibility. Yes. God is in the business of solving situations. God is in the business of solving problems. Come to him. Bring the situations to him. And he will find the answer for your situation. Yes. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Ha! Yes, sir.